Good morning, Wi-Fi sheep. Breaking news for December the 12th, 2022. Our good old friend Edwin Upton at the Rassy Pally Foundation, or whatever they're calling themselves these days, has done us a news update this morning. I've picked this up about 10.30 GMT. I'm hoping this video will be with you by midday GMT, but we'll see where we are. Anyway, so it's about the semiconductor shortage. And uh, let's have a quick look at the article. By the way, if you want to read this, uh, I'll put the link in the description of the video so you can follow and read it for yourself. Um, yeah, so it basically, it, I'll, I'll paraphrase the article. It basically talks about the fact about supply chain issues. We knew about this. Um, he's talked about the fact they've set over 100,000 units across double, uh, Pi W, Zero A, sorry, Zero W, 3A plus and uh, two, 2 and 4 gig Recipe 4s. Uh, and then it talks about going through approved resellers, etc., etc. Yes. Um, talks about now. This is a bit that's more interesting. It's about recovery ahead, and he's talking about they expect to be back to pre-pandemic levels in the second quarter of 2023. So what's that, people? March, March, April, isn't it? Around that time, is that second or third quarter? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, the thing about this article, and again, this is the stuff I start to gripe with, is it talks about um, manager our commercial industrial customers, which they've prioritised. Um, this was kind of where I was starting to get a bit naffed off with the Pi Foundation because obviously they've gone and supplied these commercial industrial customers. We don't know who they are. Uh, and it was like at the expense of the of the maker community, the hobbyists, the very people that made them a success in the first place. Um, where are we? So increasing single units uh, sales. So this is the... Um, stuff for us basically this is the hobbyist again they keep talking about this idea of uh you should use where is it for your projects i'm trying to find if i can find it there's a bit where they constantly keep going on about the fact oh you should uh use Raspberry pi pico which is their microcontroller instead of a pi which is fine but it's not perfect for everything you know especially if you want to build single board desktop linux computers a, a pico is not going to be sufficient for that anyway so uh, this last bit here is what I want to really bring up is um, for the year, you're likely you're going to see zero and zero W come back into general availability first, followed by the free A plus, uh, which does not have uh, an extensive industrial customer base, which is surprising. What was that company that did those digital signage boards and bought all the original A plus stock and you couldn't get A plus stock for love of money for a couple of years because they all went into these flat screen devices and it was for uh, commercial digital signage or something i forget anyway doesn't matter uh the free a plus is, is a good board actually we have looked at it on the channel and obviously the zero zero w are extremely useful then we come into the bad news so Raspberry zero cost increase yeah so it talks about unpleasant side effect of supply chain issues so we're talking about having to add additional uh, where are we five dollars so it's all in us dollars what i find with the, the prices generally that they'll quote in dollars but that'll still translate almost pound pound for pound pence for pence to british pound sterling so 45 dollars is not equivalent to 45 pounds right so it should be a little bit cheaper here but what they'll generally do is they'll say did apple do this as well they'll say 45 dollars and then it'll be oh 45 pounds so the products end up being even more expensive here in the uk than they would in the us despite the fact all this stuff is actually made in the uk at least i think it's still made in the uk anyway so we've got the price of the breast pie 4 has uh is going up so they've returned that to the original price of 45 dollars uh across the board five dollar increase on all variants so that's the compute module will have an increase now this is the most interesting bit and why i thought it was worth doing this video this morning and i'll uh, i'll read this to you so our original recipe zero products have always had very low margins and after the recent cost increases they're no longer commercially viable at their original price right uh if we kept the old price we're making a loss right um We've luckily decided to increase the price of the zero from five dollars to ten. It's doubled in price. I remember that first video I did when we tested the first uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, one of the first ones you could actually buy, and 
a hugely popular video on the channel and i think I, at the time it was four pounds or something and then it, it shot up to about five pounds something and ten ten dollars and zero w from 10 to 15. the upside is zero products turn to normal availability will no longer expect to see single line single unit limitations that have been a feature of the zero since its launch in 2015 so you'll be able to buy as many as you want at a time that is good news the limitations on the buy zero have been astonishingly annoying and i thought it was going to last a couple of years when it came out back in 2015 and it has just gone on for where are we now blimey we're like six seven years in um so the zero does have a lot of uses i mean we've been using one kind of on and off with the tiny basic computers build as a video terminal so in a way it's good that they're not discontinuing the product i do have a feeling though a lot of this is probably down to the competition and we've looked very closely at pi zero form factor boards we've looked at orange pi producing better faster more capable single board computers and I think this is the Pi Foundation. I keep calling them the Pi Foundation. They're probably not now. They're probably the commercial trading company. Um, basically having to respond to that because we're all going to go and find alternatives and they'll lose their market share. <sighs> yeah, good news, I guess. I mean, look, I mean, I, I'm probably a bit of a critic and a skeptic of the Pi Foundation. As I said, I'm not happy about some of the things that have been said or done of late. And that's before we even get into that hiring of a US police officer. Some, I'm not even sure what that's about, but I know people aren't happy with that at the moment. Another bad PR call. Um, we have to accept the fact that most of the hobbyist type stuff is built for Raspberry Pi. The hardware is built for Pi. People make projects for Pi. A lot of stuff I'm using only works on the Pi. It could be cross compiled, but a lot of it, if you want it off the shelf, it works on the Pi. So Raspberry Pi architecture for the hobby sector is here to stay um i'm pleased i am pleased that they're finally thinking about putting some product back into the uh, domestic consumer chain uh, i did think very recently in my update video from oh, blimey i know a few days ago i thought that perhaps they were wanting to cull it all off and they were just going to be as they're going to turn into big blue kind of like an ibm and they're just going to serve big corporate clients and the hobbyist maker community didn't matter to them anymore the very thing that built them in the first place didn't seem to care and i think that that ragged me off and i think it ragged a lot of other people off regardless to chip shortages and recessions and all the rest of it it hasn't stopped china from churning out stuff you know and we've had better more available products from china come out so um yeah but it's good it's good to see that the zero is is going to be supported and is back in stock. The price point is, I mean, it's still not terrible. It's a shame, but I I think I've said this before, and if I haven't, I meant to. But I think we're coming to the end of ultra cheap electronics and computers. I think there's always going to have to be a price increase on top. Uh, inflation and all the cost of living and all that that's gone on recently has obviously added price. So I can I can understand it um 10 pound it will be 10 pounds a board so add shipping on top of that you're probably looking at about 12 13 pounds for a pi zero just a standard pi zero now probably getting on to nearer 20 pounds that's british pound sterling for a yeah, zero w um actually interesting while i just think about this they're talking zero they haven't said zero two so are those zero originals or are those the zero two? Because the zero two used the Pi 3 chipset, slightly modified Pi 3 chipset, and the zero and zero W originals used the original, uh, I can't remember the name, but the Broadcom original chip that was in the original Pi 1s with, um, did they have a gig of RAM or did they have 512? I can't remember, they may have just been 512 uh, megabyte boards. I know the originals went up to 512, but I, yeah, probably was 512 actually. But anyway, besides the point. Um, yeah, so we'll have to see which board it is. Either way, it's, even if it is still the original zeros, that's okay for most. Depends what you want to do. If you want to be running N64 or, sort of, you know, Xbox type stuff, you're going to struggle on the original zero. Uh, but if you're doing stuff like we're doing, then it's welcome.
and it'll be fine. So that's that for now. As I said, I'll leave a link in the description to this little news update video. And uh, yeah, we'll see what materializes next year. If you haven't done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you real soon on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.